1996, so the doctors had a decision to make whether they wanted to keep my leg or amputate and along with chemotherapy. So I had probably about eight months of treatment and, and they decided the best way to save my life was to amputate my leg. Uh, and within that time, about a year and a half after, I finished my treatment and I just started the rehab and, and, and just started to wear a prosthetic limb. Um, I basically got reoccurrences and the type of cancer I have uh, it's called osteosarcoma um, and generally what happens is it's a type of bone cancer but it reoccurs in your lungs so what the doctors found was two little spots on each side of my lungs so it meant the whole process started again whereby I had to get treatment uh, again for like a six eight month period uh, chemotherapy operation on both my lungs and, and really at that time it was, it was tougher than the first time especially because I was a bit older I kind of understood what was happening to me but you know just just the family support I had I was really fortunate to have like my mum was again there the whole time. It was, it was a really trying time for her, I'm sure. Um, doctor's basically telling her her son isn't going to live anymore, but um, her strength really um, w was incredible in that time for me. Um, and, and I think it definitely helped me um, overcome that. The club that I was at had some amazing role models. Um, some of the players that were in the current well, at the time, uh, the current GB team, um, they had people like Adi Adepatan, who who was who was fantastic. He was, he, you know, he was one of our massive influences um, when I first started, and continues to be an inspiration for me. And he, um, him, and, and others, you know, in the GB team were that were there, and other guys in the club were, were fantastic. We had a great junior program, and just just being able to get in the sport, and I absolutely loved it straight away. And and, and the fact, you know. Even though it sounds kind of counterintuitive, but getting the chair and, and, and playing uh, wheelchair basketball was kind of like uh, the first time I could like really feel like a kid again. Um, in a in a way that it gave me this sense of freedom and 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 just just allowing allowing me to express myself was the one place you can go to. And from a very from very start, you know, whether it was you know from a young age not being able to now be sporty or not being able to you know just i remember like you know if you're if you're late for a bus not just being able to run after a bus little things like that those things that were kind of um limited now in the world and, and 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 this sport just allowed me to just release all of that and and i didn't even realize at the time but you know in in this fun fun way and and i think that's that's when my passion for the sport really grew Six o'clock in the morning, got to do a, a gym session, not looking forward to it. I hate early mornings. Not about it being early or anything special, it's just a matter of time, you know. There's only a certain amount of hours in the day and uh, you've got to find time for everything else as well. selected for the 2008 Beijing Paralympics um, and that was horrible and just kind of thinking you know maybe I'm not good enough this that and the other but in the back of my mind I kind of did think I hadn't paid my dues um, at that point I felt like there was a lot more things I could get better at, and I think my understanding of what it would take was starting to get better up to the World Championship in 2010, um, I was based in England again and at that point um, my hard work had been rewarded and I was very fortunate to be put on a UK sport uh, funding. I was initially not picked for the 2010 World Championships and at that point I felt like it wasn't going to happen. And I remember what, what really helped me was we were doing, I was doing a lot of individual training sessions and, and, I, and I felt like, felt like the game didn't lie to me. And that, that's, that's once again I, I found, even though my struggles were based on the fact of what I was trying to achieve through the game, the game is what kind of helped me through it. It, it became like my, my kind of therapy really. In the end I ended up getting, someone else ended up getting dropped and, and I ended up coming in for the World Championship, which was my first majors for the Great Britain team. So uh, since getting picked in 2010, um, 
I've gone on to win two gold medals, one in 2011 in Israel and one in 2013 uh, in uh, Frankfurt, both in the European Championship. So we're double European champions right now. Um, we got, got to compete in London 2012, which was a dream and a nightmare all in one, really. Like the dream of, you know, getting your home Olympics and, I, and, and, and just, just how amazing that felt. Just hearing the anthem for the first time, you know, was, was amazing, you know, just absolutely incredible. Um, seeing the support and, and, and coming out of that tunnel, I remember waiting in that tunnel and you saw all the people anticipating coming out of it, thousands and thousands of people and, and it was, London was, was, was the most special time ever but it ended, you know, with us finishing fourth. The biggest thing that, that happened from London was it, it didn't distract us again, it didn't detract us. Um, we had some changes within the Great Britain men's team um, organisationally um, and it meant, you know, we were able to grow again as a team and, and grow from London and we were able to win a gold medal in, in Frankfurt and European Championships going undefeated uh, for a whole tournament. But literally nothing else matters to me now apart from winning that gold medal in Rio. And every little stop, stop off is a, is a check. You know, next year European Championships, we're trying to make history and, and win three in a row which hasn't been done before um, and it's something that we are you know completely committed to and, and personally I'm really committed to um, and, and I think it's, it's within reach it's just all about how hard you're willing to go how hard you know you're willing to to work to achieve that because um, because you know nothing, nothing worth having comes easy, and, and I think that's that's been the biggest lesson that I've learned. Is nothing comes easy. You have to you have to go harder than than you think possible. Uh, then you have to you have to push yourself to the point where where you you don't want to go. The ball's in my court. <laughs> 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 Hard body beat.